You're listening to the Biohackers World Podcast. Hi, everyone. So I'm very excited to have this short chat, fireside chat with Valerie. And uh, I would like to introduce myself. I'm a cancer surgeon by profession, and a laparoscopic cancer surgeon and a gut specialist by profession. And I run a 200-bedded hospital back in India. So in India, I'm trying to bridge the gap by practicing reg- my regular medicine 2.0 and longevity medicine or biohacking medicine 3.0. And uh, I call myself the Aquaman biohacker. I've seen that. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you'll come to know when we talk, you listen to ahead because I, uh, I feel that my purpose of life is water. And uh, I believe in quantum biology also, the biology of belief. And it says that we are living in a life of upcoming life of quantum biology. And when I say this, I be- say that I, water, uh, they, I believe in there are no coincidences in life. And, uh, but there is a big coincidence right in our faces. And that is the planet Earth is made up of 70% water and our human body is made up of 70% water. So uh, I started diving deeply into this stark coincidence in, right in our faces. And then uh, simultaneously, I was exceeding, excelling in my gut health profession. And then longevity came into the picture. Then when I dived deeply, I I found this data that 70% of our planet is water. A newborn is born with 70% water. And when uh, an average person turns 60, the percentage of water in his is 60%. So nature has all the answers. I say it out open that my biggest teacher is nature. And you can look at a young green leaf, it is hydrated and green. Mm-hmm. And a dry old leaf is dehydrated and dead. Mm-hmm. So we are aging because we are chronically dehydrated. Okay, hold on, let me drink then. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's so important. And uh, then, uh, so let's let's first you introduce yourself and then we we'll yeah. in, uh, carry on the conversation. So I am Valerie Orsoni and I've been a biohacker since 1998. Uh, people ask me why that particular date. First, I was born with a lot of conditions like juvenile arthritis, uh, severe steatosis by age five, I'm 50% deaf, uh, I had a brain tumor, I had a, everything you can think of, uh, so many things. But I really at one point decided to heal myself. So until I turned 28 in 98, so I'm 55 today on, on paper, I was told to take anti-inflammatory drugs. And one day I'm like, that's it. Mm-hmm. And I discovered something, vitamin C. Yeah, and yeah. I said, I'm going to take one gram a day. And at the time, doctors were like, oh, no, you're going to kill your kidneys. Yeah. Your kidneys are going to be. So now, of course, I have evolved. I do HBOT. I do infrared sonas. I do a lot of scuba diving. I have like 300 dives you know, under my belt. That's amazing. And um, I want to share my knowledge on how to reverse the irreversible mm-hmm. with the world, you know. So that's why I like to talk with you. Scuba diving, you are a scuba diver too. Yes, yeah, so, so what I believe that uh, being apart from my medical journey, I have been always close to nature. I mm-hmm. was saying that nature is my biggest teacher because when I go in nature, I give get all the answers and that is true for everybody. And one day I was running and then uh, this blueprint struck me, which I which I'm now presenting all across the globe. I presented recently in Estonia. I'm going to do the same presentation in Japan. It is that, for, first of all, let's start, take a step back that for most people, what is health? Health is just avoidance of disease. And uh, that's true. That's true. And most people are just disease centric focus. Like they have a d- disease and then they try to become healthy to from the disease. It. They don't try to stay healthy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, stri- they are very disease centric. And b- that's where biohacking comes to it. And we see lots of fancy people like Brian Johnson makes us feel that biohacking is something fancy just for and expensive ath- and expensive for athletes and astronauts, maybe. Mm-hmm. But I am here to tell everybody that biohacking isn't something fancy. It's for everyone. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So it, it starts with mindset perspective shift. And I say to everyone that anybody who's thinking of their health, who's just trying to think of eating consciously healthy food is also a biohacker. Mm-hmm. You have to change your perspective. You just have to start calling yourself a biohacker and then you really become one. So you have to biohack your four different perspectives, whether you are suffering from a disease or not, whether you're just trying to live longer. Uh, if you follow this four body perspective, it will give you a different perspective and you will be able to biohack yourself better. The, the four bodies are the physical body or the earth body mm-hmm. because once you die, your physical body literally goes back to the earth. So most people health wise, they restrict their health focus journey on their physical body. Uh, but the next comes is the emotional or the water body because water and emotions both flow inside of us and outside of us. And that's where we are going to specialize this episode on podcast and talk about blue mind and the red mind because mm-hmm. that's where we connected d- deeply yesterday. 
then the third body is the air body or the air or the mental body and the fourth is the fire or the spiritual body what i present to is all 20 science back biohacks split five across these these bodies and how we can delve deeper into it for example i you were to telling that you are a scuba diver as well mm -hmm. i am also a scuba diver and i connected with a lot of scuba diving community across the world i even connected with a lot of bird watching community since i am a bird watcher La this uh, 15 days back 13 july was my birthday this mm -hmm. and happy birthday thank you <laughs> one and day before the national holiday in france <laughs> and i was uh, in coincidentally i was i say there are no coincidences i was in uk at the global bird fair which is like the biggest gathering like 10000 people birders across the globe they gather on that day and it's been a, one of the biggest bird con watching conferences in the world and i gave a talk there not on bird watching not on bird conservation which also i do but on telling bird watchers that if you do bird watching right with presence and with your blue mind then you are going to live longer because uh, bird watching is more about connecting to nature and so does so is scuba diving so scuba diving is one way where you connect to water and we've already discussed that water is one of the most potential powerful elements so ideally our life should revolve 70% around water but it is not for most people we just think about water when we drink water or when we bathe but we don't do it consciously also mm -hmm. so coming back to the one mental body longevity which is uh, one one mental body biohack that is air body biohack mm -hmm. which nobody in the longevity industry is yet talking about and which free divers do it naturally that is their breath holding test mm -hmm. uh, breath capacity to hold breath for longer times and it is all trainable so it is called co2 tolerance and i say that co2 tolerance equals to focus power the how the longer the higher you are co2 tolerant the more focused more calm under pressure more relaxed and more focused you are the lower your co2 tolerance the more distracted more anxious more uh, hyper you are so it's a simple test you can just hold your breath but the important thing which i want to tell people is when you hold your breath what really happens after most people 20 30 seconds you start feeling anxious you start feeling distracted you start feeling that panic sensation it is not because of your relationship with oxygen you don't it is not because of the lack of oxygen it is because of your co2 building up and it is the chemical relation of your body with how it reacts to co2 and not oxygen and if you train them so like free divers there's one of my friends she, she's called laya she's the world number 2 in free diving in world championship mm -hmm. and she is the only second woman in the world who have di free dived up to 100 meters oh. and guess just randomly guess being medical practitioner you we all know that our resting heart rate in athletes who are fit people are lower and the lower your resting heart rate the fitter you are so guess uh, what her heart rate was when she was at 100 meters 32 18 18 okay wow okay i was so, far you, you're close but yeah. yeah so but i'm saying so there is something called as a mammalian dive reflex mm -hmm. and when you dive in cold waters or in just water it activates that mammalian dive reflex like the whales and the dolphins have and it does some extraordinary things for your body like peripheral vasoconstriction it activates the spleen and it makes your immunity go higher it, it increases nitric oxide it, 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 yeah. it increases resilience in your body and you can just survive for up in 20 30 beats per minute and that's how powerful human body is and that's again li li living from a different perspective as a doctor if somebody will tell you that uh, my friend's pulse rate was 20 they would say that she almost died mm -hmm. but she didn't she come came back strong strongly so what are your thoughts around that so I do a lot of scuba diving, but deep, like I go to 40 meters and yeah, under. Yeah, yeah. Um, I now dive with uh, recycling mm -hmm. machines, so mm -hmm. there is no bubble, no sound, no okay. noise. So when you dive, the dolphins, yeah, you the can sharks, connect with more... they come to you yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're not scary anymore. And it's amazing. And you have this HRV elevation that's insane. Insane. Like yeah. I go to 125 and yeah. above heartbeat goes down yes that's and i don't want to come back up and you know what i call the moment my head comes out of the water i call it the little death mm -hmm. because it's super hard to leave that area yeah so because you're so connected to it absolutely absolutely that's yeah. the red or the blue so so <laughs> then, then we le so let's simplify things for all of you let's mm -hmm. talk about the blue mind and the red mind so like a little yeah. bit blue blue jacket red, red jacket. i mean we did it on purpose just so you know 
<laughs> I, I, I always loved the color red, uh, blue, and she always loved the color red anyways. Yeah. So blue mind is, uh, you can equate it to your parasympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. And the red mind you can equate to it through the sympathetic nervous system. So I always like the analogy when you, uh, we always think from a hunter-gatherer approach. When, when we talk about longevity, it is best to equate ourselves with how nature made us rather than what we have made of ourselves right now. Mm -hmm. So when we were in, uh, when we were in, when we are used to live in forest, we used to wake up with the sunrise. We used to, after sunset, we used to probably light a fire, cook a meal and then go to bed. So that's, we were already in sync with our biologies. Mm -hmm. and, and we were living most, uh, so red mind is essential. Like f the red mind is a fight, sympathetic system is well, the if, fight if and the, the fight. If the mammoth comes at you, you yeah. need your red mind Absolutely. on. <laughs> so uh, it's a red, uh, red mind is a sympathetic overdrive or the mm -hmm. sympathetic system. So for example, if you're walking in a jungle, a tiger comes or a lion comes yeah. to next to you, you cannot, poof. you cannot sit in your blue mind meditating like a Buddha, the tiger might eat you up. Mm -hmm. uh, but the important thing is that so red mind is essential it is the alert mind it is the focused mind it helps you do things and the blue mind is the parasympathetic nervous system so when a lion comes to you and the red mind your heart rate rises it mm -hmm. sometimes peaks it gives you the drive to run to even climb a tree or whatever you want to do to save yourself or your loved ones the other thing which happens in and Coincide other uh, contrastly when you do meditation or mm -hmm. you do breath work or you do underwater meditation or any kind of relaxing activity that's where your parasympathetic nervous system starts to get active your vagal nerve which is the nerve responsible for your gut brain connection get activated the cold blood cold plunges ice bath also trigger that so the blue mind then is the calm mind it brings your heart rate down and as you were mentioning about heart rate variability i think heart rate variability is a beautiful parameter with these rings i'm wearing ultra human aura a, a whoop and <laughs> i removed the whoop it didn't match my red dress yeah it's in the room <laughs> <laughs> so all the which we track with so this heart rate variability is a very little difficult challenging but parameter I have a question for you yeah Depending on which tool you use, mm -hmm. the HRV is crazily different. Yes. For instance, you use the heart math. Mm -hmm. My HRV is a 120, mm -hmm. 70, 80. Mm -hmm. This aura, 30. Yes. So and so I talk to so many people and they're like, oh, we don't measure it the same way. And mm -hmm. I'm like, when you take my temperature, it's always the same way. So why is it so different? It is different because, very beautiful question is my favorite because all these technology, specifically measuring heart rate variably, it actually needs, so what is heart rate variably? We need to understand yeah. it deeply and then how technically difficult it is to measure. Okay. It is the variability between your heart rates. For example, let's go back to our tiger incident. We were in the jungle, a tiger comes, we, we ran and we climbed a tree. Both of us. And then we continued the podcast on the tree. Okay. We're on the tree in my dress. <laughs> <laughs> so our heart rates went high. Maybe up to 120 because we ran and we climbed. No, come and on. We're scared. 150. 150. Okay. <laughs> and then, uh, then we start, sat in our Buddha postures on the top of the tree and we started to meditate. So our heart rate slowly, come, gradually starts falling down. We are both resilient people. We are amazing, resilient beings. So uh, our heart rate... After maybe five minutes, it is 60 mm -hmm. or maybe even 50. Mm -hmm. If we do some breath works yeah. we, on the tree, we were doing Wim Hof breathing. Yeah. So we uh, brought our pulse to 50. Okay. So that is the very high heart rate variability from 150 in five minutes, it came down to 50. So, but all these technical gadgets, so ideally you need 24 hour medical grade heart rate recording to understand uh, the, your, to measure your heart rate variability. And ideally, anything which is below your wrist is not great at measuring, uh, below your elbows actually, Elbow. is mm -hmm. not great at measuring heart rate variability. So I have tried five, you six devices. You need a big ring here. No, so the <laughs> best device in the world, which uh, and the most accurate scientifically, mm -hmm. is the chest brand. Yes. Okay. There is a band called Morpheus Chest Band. It's very uh, economical also, I think, just called $110, I guess. Mm -hmm. You wear it on your chest and there are morning, uh, once you get up in the morning, you wear it and you test your recovery score. That is your heart rate variability mm -hmm. during the sleep. And then during your strenuous workout, during your run or strength training, you can wear it and do it. So it's a little uncomfortable, but that's the best way technically mm -hmm. available right now to so measure. So you said the brand again? It's called uh, Morpheus. Morpheus, okay. And there are other brands also, but one. Mm -hmm. the, this is what Andrew Huberman uses himself. Mm -hmm. who's, uh, I'm a great follower of that guy. Okay. He's a great person. 
So about why you said absolutely rang out. Right now, I have the app on my phones. I'm using four different things. Apple, Ultra Human Ring, and Aura Ring, and Woo Band. Mm -hmm. And if you open my app, all of them four will show different readings. Yes. So in heart rate variability, since it's a new thing for the technical industry, it'll take more years to measure it deeply. I think it is important to look at your trends rather than yeah, numbers. That's what I look, trends. Yeah. Yeah. So trends are the best thing. And I have also invested in one more company called Vereclip. The Aura's founders have also invested in their com that company. It is like a clip which you wear on your underpants. Mm -hmm. And it it, uh, it is co closer to your core temperature. So it measures your core temperature uh, strongly. Yeah, the sweat. And the well. sweat rate. Yeah. And uh, so in heart rate variability, you have to understand that in life, everything is rhythmic and it flows in cycles. So like when we, uh, so we need to understand uh, our core body temperature to understand that and also to decode our sleep. Sleep is uh, again, one of the biggest issues these days, right? Don't tell me about it. In this hotel, I wake up at 2.30 every day. <laughs> So, um, I'm too hot. I get too hot in the room. <laughs> once you wake up in the morning, uh, like again, uh, our analogy when you used in the forest. Yeah, usually 5.30 for me. The heart rate? No, 5.30 is wake up. Heart huh. rate is like 50. Okay. 40, 48, 50. So when you wake up in the morning, your heart, your temperature of the body starts to rise. Mm -hmm. Because and for most people, it's like for example, let's take your example, if you get up at 5.30 or 6 in the morning, then around 12 in the afternoon, you will be at your temperature maxima of your body because that time your body's metabolism will be peaking. You will be a, probably, nature would want you to perform at your optimum in terms of digestion, in mm -hmm. terms of thinking, in terms of anything, everything. So that is why accordingly your, your temperature maximum and your body's metabolism will actually peak around 12 in the afternoon and then towards evening when the sun sets down your heart your temperature starts creeping down and in your suppose you go to bed at 10 so for most people who go to bed at 9 or 10 mm -hmm. their temperature minima happens when around 12 or 2 in the night and that's when your heart rate slows down. That's where your parasympathetic nervous then system. Then you get the deep sleep. Then you de get the deep sleep. So the Im by improving your better quality of sleep, if you get to your temperature minima early in the night, mm -hmm. then you'll have better deep quality deep sleep. That's why I go to bed at 8.30 but, or 9. <laughs> but most people, if you look at their numbers on Aura yeah. or Ultra Human, they get their heart rate uh, temperature minima just before they get up. Like if you wake up at 6, like they'll 4 or 5. Before. So that is not a good quality sleep. So for that, you can biohack by doing ice baths in the morning mm -hmm. and saunas in the evening. That's what... Oh, that's what I do. Yeah, so yeah. that's the, that's the protocol. Cold shower, I don't do ice baths. <laughs> so when you do ice baths or cold showers in the morning, it is a, like a shock for your body. It cools down, but when you come out of it, it heats faster. Yes. So it, you get your temperature peak earlier in the day and more higher probably. And same way, if you do saunas or warm baths, many people say that it's a warm bath before bed is a re good to recover. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it, that time when you're doing the warm or the hot bath or the saunas, it raises your temperature. One, once you come out of it, it uh, contrastedly reduces it your down. temperature and your temperature minima is attained earlier and faster and more lower. So you get a better quality deep sleep. Just one question for you. Hmm. We have one minute. So your top three biohacks. Number one is ice bath okay. or cold rituals. Okay. Uh, and it is mastery of your HRV, the heart rate variability. Okay. Number two is cellular hydration. Okay. Because, uh, so I speak about cellular hydration since you're asking me three things. One is, uh, I told you already the uh, HRV mastery or ice plunges. Number two is the cellular hydration. And number three is flow state. Okay. And flow states are sacred, I believe. Uh, flow state is a state is a neuroscientific state from a doctor perspective. I, I delve deeply into the neuroscience of flow, and flow states is a state where literally time stops, and time dilatation is possible in flow states. If it's like a state where so true longevity happens not by adding years to your life it's by living so deeply mm -hmm. living so deeply that time also flows around you and not against you oh that's i like that that's a good conclusion thank you so much yeah <laughs> thank you okay guys if you missed chicago if you missed los angeles it's okay no panic because we have the same event in miami early november really come it's an amazing community we learn so much and even so even if you think you're a biohacker who knows everything, believe me, you will learn something in Miami.